Living in Virginia, you're in the fast lane on the information superhighway. We've invested $3 billion in Virginia's broadband network to give you one of the fastest internet connection speeds in the world so you can build relationships, bring new business to our state, and meet the future of education. It's amazing what we can do together. Visit VCTA.com to learn how broadband connects the Commonwealth. Welcome to a special edition of Cable Reports, brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association. I am Woody Evans. Today we're uh, featuring students uh, from the Prince William Young Leaders Program. While here in Richmond, they are watching the legislative process, both in the House and Senate, meeting with policymakers, and visiting historical sites. So let's welcome, first of all, Jillian Stetz. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. And Taylor Hopkins, I believe. Yes. Good to see you. Taylor, can you tell us uh, why you got involved in this program and what your experiences have been so far in Richmond? Well, my mom was like, ooh, Taylor, I saw about this program. I was like, okay, mom, because, you know, moms always want you to do everything and anything. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll apply, and if I don't get in, then, like, it's not for me. And so I got in, and I was like, huh, okay. <laughs> and so I came down, and I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. I've never really been that into politics and it's not really a passion of mine. And so I wasn't really thinking I was gonna have this grand experience and everything, but being here, it's been really eye-opening. And even though I still don't wanna go into politics and be a politician, I am more interested and more, um, more willing to be an advocate for things, even if it's not anything spectacular. And I've learned that being here and at the local level it's still equally as important as people always talk about the federal level and the president and everything like that, but it's still important to be focused and be in, in tune with what's going on here in your local capital. And Jillian, uh, have you observed the difference between what you hear in the media and maybe have learned and studied in some government uh, class uh, in, in high school versus what goes on here? Yeah, definitely. Um, they teach us in school, like and like parents tell you that like, Local government isn't as big of a deal as federal government, but when you come here, you definitely see like how big of a deal it is, and how the um, senators that the senator that we met with, how he's going through the bill process. We definitely don't learn about that, and we like honestly before I came here, we didn't. I've never been taught about like the subcommittees, and we went and watched subcommittees, and that was really interesting. And there's a lot of things that you don't know about what goes on in local government, and I think that that's. It's good that they have this program for like young people to come in here and learn those things. They won't know otherwise. And Taylor, have you been impressed with how hard these members work? She mentioned subcommittee meetings. Mm -hmm. They usually occur very early in the morning, and these members work until very late at night. Yeah, and just this morning, it was, what, 7.30 or something, and they had started a committee meeting, and the ERA was one of the things that was talked about. Um, and it's really interesting to see everyone hard at work and they're really dedicated and really motivated um, in what they're talking about because this isn't just, you know, something like, oh, okay, let's go to work. They're passionate and that's what drives them. And I thought that was really interesting to see. And Jillian, what about that debate concerning the Equal Rights Amendment? You know, there's passion on both sides of it. Uh, but one of the things that occurs here in Richmond, there is a, a high level of civility and so people can actually discuss and debate issues rationally. Yeah, I feel like that um, meeting was very interesting to watch, to see how both sides handled the situation. Um, it was clear that the, uh, the head of the committee was not for it before she even killed the bill. But I just feel like it was very interesting to see how how many people were there to stand up for what they believed in was and what was right and I feel like it was it was clearly shown what the people want by the majority of people who stood when asked who supports the ERA and I feel like someday the ERA will get passed and it'll and be course, a great day for everyone. Great. Of course Taylor this is what's known as a 
short session, 45 to 60 days, uh, because it's an odd number of years, and even numbered years is 90 days, and then they go home and they have to live under the laws that they have passed. Many of them hold full-time jobs outside of being a, a member of the General Assembly. How important is it to be a citizen legislator versus a full-time one from what you have observed here? I think that one of the things that makes a politician a politician for the people is that they are a citizen and that they recognize and see people in their day-to-day -day life and not just, okay, I'm here in my office, let me type up a bill. You know, they have to have some kind of connection to the people in order to know what they actually want. And, you know, even just being a citizen themselves, that can give them more insight to what the people actually want and what they need from their legislature. And Jillian, what would you take back or uh, likely to tell your colleagues when you, when you get back home about this experience? I'm definitely going to talk about how it's, it's clear that they are working for the people. Like a lot of people go around and say that it's not for them and that what they say doesn't matter, but it's clear when you watch what they do that they really take into account who they are working for and which is the people. It's really inspiring to see how much they care about what the people think. And it's such a great thing to know now that I've been here that it's actually, it really is on the people. It's not just like what the senator would want to make into a bill. And Taylor, have you had the opportunity to meet with any people from the executive branch, for example, the governor's office, mm -hmm. lieutenant governor, or any other state agencies? We actually did meet with both the governor and the lieutenant governor, Gov Lieutenant Governor Fairfax and Governor Northam. We also met with Senator McPike, who sponsors the program as well as some advocacy groups um, and lobbyists and um, some other delegates as well. So it was very, very interesting. Uh, did you know Senator McPike before you got involved in this program, Joey? Uh, well, yes. He was friends with um, some of our family friends. So I knew that's how I found out about the program was our family friend spoke to my mother about it and she spoke to me about it and it sounded really interesting. What about advocacy groups or lobbyists? Have you had an opportunity to, to meet with any other groups? Yeah, we met with um, the ERA uh, head woman. She was very humble. She talked about how she has a family and she talked about her outside life and how this is affecting her and how how it really does affect everyone. Um, so it, it really put the ERA on a personal level to meet her. Uh, we also met with a few journalists and they told us about their jobs and um, how their day-to-day -day goes and about their, their life so far. and That was also really interesting. Taylor, what's the thing that has surprised you the most since you've been here? I think the energy that you feel coming here and the politicians and their personalities. You, I had this mindset of politicians being, you know, these big wigs and they look down at people and, you know, and who are you and everything like that. But they're really people and they're just like everyone else and they want what's best for, for everyone. And so it was cool to see how kind and how caring and how passionate they are about everything that they're doing um, and it really surprised me honestly but it was it was cool to see. Jillian based upon this experience do you think you'll get involved in uh, in politics at least in terms of advocacy or even potentially elected office? Well I definitely don't want to be um, elected into any sort of government but I really encourage people who are into that I think that it's really necessary for people to go into this field and work for the people, as I said before, and I just feel like this um, this program encourages so many people, if they wanted to go into government, this should re they really should look into this program. And Taylor, do you have any different aspirations as a result of this experience? I don't think my aspirations have changed. I just think that now I'm more inspired to be a more holistic citizen, and even though, like I said, I don't want to be a politician, still stay involved and stay connected to politicians and to people who are conducting you know legislature that's going to affect me in my life. Well gosh thank you both for being here Jillian Statt and Taylor Hopkins. Good luck. Uh, we're proud of your participation in the Prince William Young Leaders Program. Thank, thank you. you. For having us. Thank you for watching this special edition of Cable Reports brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association. Until next time I'm Woody Evans. Living in Virginia, you're in the fast lane on the information superhighway. We've invested $3 billion in Virginia's broadband network to give you one of the fastest internet connection speeds in the world so you can build relationships, bring new business to our state, 
and meet the future of education. It's amazing what we can do together. Visit VCTA.com to learn how broadband connects the Commonwealth. Welcome to a special edition of Cable Reports, brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association. I am Woody Evans. Today we are featuring several students from the Ella Baker Youth Leadership Program. While here in Richmond, they are watching the legislative process and in the House and in the Senate, meeting with policymakers and visiting historical sites. Let me introduce them to you. First of all, Gabriela Owusu Anse. Good to see you. <laughs> Ethan Marcano, good to see you, sir. Nice to meet you. Punamal Gross, good to see you. So tell me, uh, Punamal, what's your interest, uh, what was your interest in getting involved in this program and what has your experience been so far here in Richmond? Well, I originally learned about this program through my teacher who recommended it to me. And I've always been like interested in government, but not as much local government. So through this program, I feel like I've had, I guess, a thorough understanding about how government works in Virginia, as well as how constituents have a role in it as well. And Ethan, I, I take it this experience has been a little bit different from what uh, you learned maybe in school or right. heard about through the media. Right. Um, I took. Uh, I took government uh, lot, two years ago, and it was mainly focused at the national level. And I felt like this experience was really interesting because you see a different side of politics than what you would see in D.C. And I, it really shows you how much work goes in, not only from the from the delegates and the senators, but from their aides and all and all the lobbyists and interest groups that come together to support our political process. And Gabrielle, I understand that you've had an opportunity to, uh, to meet with the, the governor and the lieutenant governor and, and other members of the executive agency. Tell us a little bit about those meetings and what impressed you. Um, I think, uh, first of all, with the governor, I think what really impressed me was when we were talking about how, just how humble he is, the way he talked to us, how he interacted with all of us. I mean, one of, one of um, our people, he, he even made a suggestion to the governor on how to handle some of the affairs going on. And he just took it, he just took it in, like, he, he, in, like, in an intellectual way. He looked at us as we were people, like, I wouldn't say colleagues, obviously, because we were still, we were still so young, but he looked at us as we were people and not down at us as, as we were children. And that was really, that was really amazing to see. And Punamal, the, uh, the, the, the governor, as you know, is a physician, so he has a good bedside manner. Maybe that helps him being a politician as well. Yeah, actually, I wanted, well, I was always, like, interested in the medical field and seeing how he actually transitioned from being a physician into a governor also really inspired me as well. I'm actually thinking about almost being an advocate for health care for other people through this um, program. Wonderful. This morning I had the opportunity to, uh, to interview a member of the Senate. She's female. She happens to be a practicing physician, and there are at least one or two other members of the House of Delegates who are physicians as well, and they have a lot to bring to the table, no question about it. Ethan, talk to us about uh, the, uh, uh, the debates that you have observed here. Have they been civil? Uh, have they been full of facts and, and rationale versus some of the emotion that we observe in other places? Well, I'd say, uh, I'd say it's definitely a mix between the two because a lot of debates are very civil. Um, I, I don't recall a time if there was yelling, but maybe once here or there, there were, you could obviously tell that some representatives were not happy or they were, they were definitely emoting a lot. But I really think that e every one of them goes out of their way to make sure that everyone's included in the process, that, that the facts and most importantly the truth is being shown to not only each other to, but to the citizens that are watching. And Gabriella, what about the uh, discussion around uh, the Equal Rights Amendment? I understand that uh, you've had an opportunity to listen to that debate as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't actually know what was going on until I came here, so it was, it was very educational. We got to speak with one of the leaders who were um, organizing this whole thing, and she, she just, you could really feel her passion 
as she as she would explain how she went about it and how much it meant to her. And also after this morning, getting to talk with some of the women who were who were here advocating for it, it they were just they were just too strong in their stance for for the, for this movement. They they really believed in it, and that was that was really amazing. In Punawal, you have had an opportunity to meet with uh, advocacy advocacy groups such as those supporting the DRA. Well, what about any other groups? Have you had an opportunity to meet with them? Um, we were able to meet with um, people. Um, there was one, an advocate for mental health, which I really enjoyed hearing about because I feel like today um, we're finally having a conversation about mental health and it's really nice to hear it from someone who wants, um, I guess, legislation passed to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to receive those types of um, Yes, um, privilege. privileges or opportunities. And Ethan, what's been your biggest surprise since you've been here? Um, I think my biggest surprise was the kind of the spirit of camaraderie that permeates the uh, permeates the building because it's like as we know, uh, politics today it's extremely d divisive, and I think that fact that they all come together in the end and they all represent Virginia. That really makes it, it really gives a person hope in how, um, how politics can be used to overcome adversity. And Gabriella, what about some of the issues affecting you as a high school student? I know, for example, over the last few years, there's been a debate about uh, the, uh, the number and intensity of the standards of learning tests that uh, you've been subject to. Uh, uh, that's something that uh, uh, these, these members of the General As Assembly have a lot to say about. How do you think that will affect you in the future? Well, um, I graduated in like maybe two years, in like, two, like next year. So I think it really, I think it mostly is mostly going to impact like um, the people coming like, after me. And I really, I really believe that it's important that we do everything we can to help them to make it, to always make it better as we move along. Um, one of the I, it's not exactly uh, in the high school level, but one of the uh, bills that we, we met, we, we sat in the community for, the committee for was uh, was this debate about raising tuition in Virginia, which I didn't I didn't get to hear the whole the whole plan for it, but I do not like. It. I understand <laughs> I what you mean. Of course, that could have an impact on your future in terms of uh, money for college because it's pretty expensive now. Do you think that's going to have an impact on you pursuing? Uh, your college education? I think definitely. I think one of the things that I learned through this program is that oftentimes state and local government, um, the decisions made by state and local government oftentimes affect people more than the decisions of the federal government because it oftentimes goes into effect earlier. And I think that education is definitely um, something that would affect me and what I would decide to pursue in the future. And Ethan, I'm going to give you the last word. There are about 30 seconds. Uh, what would you say to your colleagues uh, back home? Uh, um, <laughs> I'd say that this was definitely a wonderful experience in understanding our civic process because there's, there's so much that goes into it that we don't even know about. That like we, we may go to like the ballot box once a year, but there's so much more that goes into it, and it's definitely important that we know. Great. Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, have a good time while you're here in Richmond. Take care. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Uh, stay tuned as we continue our conversation with other students from Prince William County. Living in Virginia, you're in the fast lane on the Information Superhighway. We've invested $3 billion in Virginia's broadband network to give you one of the fastest internet connection speeds in the world so you can build relationships, bring new business to our state, and meet the future of education. It's amazing what we can do together. Visit VCTA.com to learn how broadband connects the Commonwealth. We are continuing our discussion with students from the Ella Baker Youth Leadership Program. And I want to introduce first Liam Nash. Good to see you. Pleasure to be here. And Sarah Nagpal. Good to see you, Sarah. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, Sarah, tell us a little bit about your experience here, uh, why you got involved in this program, and what you have learned so far. Well, I originally signed up for the program because I saw that it was taking place at um, Virginia's capital, Richmond, and I really am interested in going into pre-law during, um, I'm a senior in high school, so 
I applied to college under um, taking the track of pre-law and also as a political science major. So I thought this would be a really great opportunity to kind of learn more about what I'm signing myself up for, seeing how um, our legislation works, the people involved, and I don't know, I did some, um, I googled it online and I saw that they kind of met the governor and stuff, I thought it was really cool, so I was like, hey, why not, I signed up. And I'm really glad I did sign up because I've learned a lot about things that, you know, you can't learn in a classroom. I've gotten to sit into discussions and see how the legislative process actually works firsthand, which I think is really cool. I would recommend like every student to be able to do it. It was really, it was changing. Interesting, because you can follow in the footsteps of Delegate Foy, who sponsors this program, because she's an <laughs> attorney and she became yeah, a politician. For sure. Um, her story, she kind of told us how she went from becoming like a lawyer and she turned it into a public defender because she wanted to help people who are in poverty. And um, I don't know, her work and kind of her ideas too, that really touched me and, and I feel like I agree with a lot of her ideals. So definitely um, Delegate Foy, she was really inspirational. Liam, I understand you've had the opportunity to be in a meeting with the governor and other executive uh, agency uh, personnel. Tell us about that experience. It was very interesting. Uh, we spoke with the governor and he, uh, our entire group did. Uh, he asked us about what we thought. It was very interesting to me that he wanted to get his, his opinions on our opinions, if you will. Uh, he asked us about uh, gun control, what ideas we had, um, what we thought our, the problems were in our communities. Uh, we talked about SROs and... Um, school resource officers. Yes, school resource officers, pardon me. And uh, issues that we had in our constituencies, which he as the governor may not have the power to do anything directly about, but he can suggest legislation to his senators um, and he can visit he can know what his constituents are thinking. I, I think that was very important for him as a governor to know about, and I was impressed that he did that. Uh, he was very human to me. Uh, sitting at home, watching the TV or reading articles, I don't get a sense of the people who are making this legislation. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to come down here. Somewhat on a whim, I, I saw this application and just, oh, could be interesting, filled it out. Uh, I wanted to know who are making these laws, you know, where they come from. Just speaking to Del Delegate Foy about her two young children and uh, speaking about her past as a public defender, I realized I'm not just talking to somebody on TV, I'm not just talking to a face. I'm talking to somebody who cares about her constituents, about what she's doing. She's truly passionate about who she serves. And she's a human being, like all of us. It makes everything that you see on, I don't know, C-SPAN or CNN or MSNBC, it, it gives it another layer of depth because you're not just seeing words written on a page. You're not just seeing faces in a magazine with somebody else's words about them. You're speaking to and listening to humans proposing legislation for humans. And sir, uh What's been your biggest surprise? Unless you want to comment on what yeah. he just said. Um, it's also going off what he said. I feel like often our youth is kind of overlooked or our ideas aren't heard as much, but something I really loved about the governor and Delegate Foy is they asked us, like, what do you want to know? Or what are your suggestions on this topic? And I feel like, yeah, that really just touched me in a way that it made me feel good that we have these leaders in our state who actually care about us. And also, I learned a lot about the legislative process. You know, usually we think federal is the people who are like, they have control of everything. And I guess it wasn't until I did this, I realized how much power the state has and how that now I feel moved that if I have an issue in my state or in my like county school district, that I can go talk to someone and something will happen, you know? Are you involved in student government, Liam? I personally am not, no. Uh, you think you might become more involved, not only in student government necessarily, but maybe with some kind of community organization? Certainly. Uh, I met with, um, this morning we watched the uh, ERA go up in one of the houses. And after it, it, it was defeated, uh, well, excuse me, it was uh, PBI'd. Um, PBI'd? That's a, that's a new term that you've learned since yeah, you it were It is indeed. Passed by indefinitely. Correct. Okay. Um, and after 
the vote was passed, I, we, it, the room was so crowded we weren't able to get in. Uh, but speaking to all the, uh, the um, excuse me, the ERA proponents, I actually, I got four business cards uh, for, from people who are actually in my district, uh, in Nova and in Prince William County. Um, they have a meeting tonight, I may go to it if I can. Um, and I look forward to being involved in not only student government, but our local governments, uh, attending more school board meetings, uh, speaking up about the problems that I had. Because before I felt, you know, these are local problems. Who really cares about them? I, I wasn't sure exactly where to go about it, and I wasn't sure if anything could be done about it. But now I realize that there are people, in Richmond or not, who care about everything that's happening in these little communities populated around Virginia and the country. And I feel now that no matter what the problem is, if I find the proper places to take it, somebody will be there to listen. And Sarah, have you been impressed with the debate around the, the Equal Rights Amendment, both sides? Oh, for sure. Being a woman like that, something that really hit home for me. And um, I was talking to one of the ladies who leads it like the most, and she was telling us kind of her tactics and her plan and how she plans to extend it. And it's just amazing the amount of work that goes into this um, types of like groups and everything. And personally, I was really sad when it got PW, was it? PBI. PBI. Yeah, I, I was, too. Yeah, I was, I was kind of hurt. But um, I really do, it was just amazing to see how it started as one group and now it's turned into such a big thing that there were so many people, there was a line to try to get in to even watch it, and it was just amazing. Liam, were you uh, surprised at the number of people who are in the halls here talking to their members and attending the subcommittee and committee hearings? I was. Uh, some part of me was expecting more. Uh, well, it, it was on uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So there were more people than normal, uh, people being off of work and uh, lobbyists coming in because I believe it was a, a lobby day um, where uh, more lobbyists had the opportunity to come, to, to come in and uh, speak to their delegates. I actually, uh, walking into the uh, State House the other day, uh, there was ERA members with posters and signs handing out buttons and uh, those little impermanent tattoos uh, all up and down the hallway. Uh, and talking to some of them was a, a fantastic experience because I did not know, I knew the uh, Equal Rights Amendment was uh, a movement in Virginia, but I didn't know much at all about it. And when I came here, I, I was engaged in it. This morning I was downright disappointed when it didn't pass. Um, she was. There was a lady, she was about like 80 years old, and she was saying that she's done it her whole entire life. And she was like, you know, it's really great to meet people who are young like you that are so passionate to see that like I can take a break and it can like still continue. Do you remember, did you meet her? I did, I yeah. did, with the, with the color type correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great, we're gonna have to leave it at there. Sarah and Liam, good to see you, good to be here. Uh, take a lot of this learning back home and share it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching this special edition of Cable Reports brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association. Until next time, I'm Woody Evans. Thank mm -hmm. you.